Congratulations. <laughs> we, we're in. Uh, I don't know why, but the link uh, Marguerite has to use to start. I was inside, but she couldn't get in. And then suddenly it's like the, the link was broken. So I had to create a new one. And I see a, a nice, nice number zero here. So probably nobody walking, watching. So I'm going to try and see what is the link that is working on YouTube. So I can send it to you guys live. Yes, this is the one. Do I have to relay it? On my social media as well, or will it uh, be okay? I can send it to you here on the lower left corner. By the chat, I just sent it to you. Okay. And now I'm going to publish it on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Okay, I do the same. Anyway, I'm tagging you on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Get me. Uh -huh. Okay, Facebook is done. Again, Facebook, Facebook, new Facebook, how much I hate you. <laughs> I, I get used to it, actually. <laughs> I, I, I am using something that is called, um, uh, what's the name? Revert Site. It's a plugin. Mm -hmm. And you can go back to the old one. Oh, really? Yeah. But I get I get used to the new version. So uh, you're, 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 a, you're a hero. <laughs> I, can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I just can't. <laughs> Anyway, I just I just send it to I just oh I forgot to tag you on Twitter. Tag you with a new link. Oh. Yeah, I know I have a lot of people on Instagram that told me they will follow it. It's not that easy to okay. I just tag you on Twitter and Facebook okay. with okay. a new link. Yeah. Uh, and let's see if people start seeing it. See, we, we already have eight people connected. So okay, good. that was fast. Hi, Carolina. To all of you again, sorry, the ones you're, who just entered. I was explaining because before we had a zero, so you probably didn't hear what I said. Uh, the link that I had, Marguerite couldn't get in. Couldn't, couldn't get in. It was broken or something. Oops, so, I had to, so I had to kill it and create a new one. And of course, YouTube, because YouTube is stupid, uh, didn't accept the connection between Restream and the new link. So I had to warn you all and send you all the new link to the to, to be connected with us. But it's, the numbers are growing. We have 14 people connected now. I can see the stream working on YouTube. Uh, so it's a good thing. So going back to the beginning. Hello, Marguerite. How are you? Hello, David. I'm good. So, and you? Uh, I still have a little cough from the, you know, my cold or something I had last week. So that, you know, drinking a lot of water, okay. uh, having cough, uh, cough, um, cough, cough, you know, candies or whatever yeah. you call it, and all these things. Uh, how's things in your, in your, in Montreal? How things in your neck of the woods? Situation is getting better. It's still, oh my God, this is crazy. Don't kill yeah. me. It's, I want this to be over within. You, you, you're speaking about the COVID, I guess. I'm speaking about everything. But of course, COVID is central stage in our life, so yeah. Hello. So um, in Montreal, uh, it it finally start uh, snowing yesterday. <laughs> so we we are used to very long and snowy winter in Montreal. So it was kind of uh, yeah, finally snow. So that was nice. And uh, um, concerning the COVID, actually, it's getting worse and worse. And they are the government, because it's a Quebecois government, which is a, the one of the state where I live in uh, Canada. Uh, their management of the pandemic was kind of, uh, I guess, messy, but it's a bit like everywhere else. I, I don't know if there is a, a country where it's not kind of a big improvisation, because it's uh, something very new. and. Uh, with huge proportion, and uh, they don't really know what to do. Even if they they used to have some emergency emergency plans, it 
you know, it was not really fitting the COVID, I guess. No. Okay. And uh, the program is, uh, yes, there is more and more people sick and uh, the health system uh, has been uh, over a lot of cut, budget cut uh, over the past uh, decades. So now it's totally saturated and, and uh, the people in the, the health, um, in health, you know, in hospital, uh, they are like uh, burnt, burnt out and um, really tired and uh, they don't have that much of bed available but they, they start they started uh, counseling the surgery for people that uh, do not have covid just to have uh, enough bed available if there is a, a rush during the ho holiday because each time in january like the emergencies are full even when it's not covid time so they are really freaking out right now so a few weeks ago they say to people, oh, we will allow a Christmas and a New Year Eve kind of family party. And yeah. then after they were like, oh, okay, sorry, oops, it was a mistake. It's getting worse and worse. So people are like fully depressed <laughs> because nothing happening. And now it's a hard lockdown. So uh, you can only go to make your grocery. And uh, school and daycare uh, are still open, uh, which is great because in March it, it was all closed and it was kind of uh, hell for parents. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think you're all here. So, yeah, all, yeah. Remember Spain lockdown for three months? Oh, it true. was March, yeah. March to full June. Yeah, okay, yeah. And it's long. of course, okay. Uh, it was the same for us. So daycare reopened in June, mid June, I remember. No, here so, they open. They they open back in September here. Ah, oh, September. Oh my God. Okay. Yes, because that's <laughs> when the school starts again. Yeah. Like okay. 11, I think it was September twelfth or thirteen. But for us, it was all the way from March until the mid, mid mid September. Okay. With oh. the kid here. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you do. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, we we just did. That's, that's the yeah. thing. We, we we all do our, our best <laughs> so. yeah exactly so we have the same situation yeah but yeah. uh i hope the school ha would have started earlier this has been amazing i guess the same for you the moment they can go back to school you feel like okay at least a small fraction of my life is back to normal right yeah but also for the kid it's good you know oh, I, absolutely. I, absolutely. I see my, my daughter she need to socialize a lot you know she she really miss to see her friend and so yeah yeah i remember one time in uh i think it was june my wife paloma took her you know to meet uh, some of her best friends and and they were told it was like three three girls and like uh -huh. you cannot touch each other you cannot you know have to keep the distance etc etc the moment they saw each other no forget about it they jump they hugged each other they kissed each other and they couldn't stop crying for like yeah. 10 minutes and paloma was telling me I couldn't stop it. And I, I wasn't going to start berating them. If you saw that, and I was like, don't, you don't have to explain. Yeah, you, you can't. Is, you can't. Is, is there, is there, they haven't seen their, that's their world. It's us and their friends in school. And they haven't seen them in three months. What's their age of your? Six. Six, yeah, they're really young. Yeah. It's not easy for them to understand uh, the social distancing and mask and anything like that. So. No, she's, she's really good at that, honestly. Right. Always with a mask, always with a distance. In, in fact, she berates people who doesn't wear a mask in the middle of the street. And she doesn't have any problems. Like, just, you know, turning around and saying, ponte la mascara, you know, wear the mask. Mm -hmm. So she's very good at that. But at that precise moment, you know, it was like, yeah. all the barriers, like my friends who haven't seen a sick, who are my life, I see yeah. every day in the school, are here. Yeah. So, yeah. of course, they, they can't. It's, they're primal, they're kids, and it, it's part of it. Yeah. it as I yeah. said, that's why I said to my wife, how can you, you know, berate her or telling a word? Can, you just can't hug her, and when she tells you, mom, I'm really happy, thank you for doing this. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's good. You, you can't stop that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, in, uh, is, is the Basic Nation going already there or, to, or, not, or not yet? So what? The vaccination is already happening. Yeah, it started in uh, you know the um, uh, the elderly people house. I, I don't know what the name in. Uh, no, no, I, the residences. Yes, residences. Yeah, but so the one for people that really have a very heavy uh, health condition and uh, de uh, dependency. They say that. 
you know, so they started to the ones that are the most vulnerable to to, to die from the COVID, actually. So, yes, here is the uh, here uh, the European agency, which is always the most, as you know, careful about yeah. you know, checking yeah. everything. They approved it an hour ago. Okay, so it's only one week after us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's uh, 21, and they said. Which one? Today, it'll start being administered for all over Europe, over the union on the 27th. And it'll be okay. the same. Elderly people, healthcare workers, yeah. that's mm. the first group, and then it'll be more, you know, people mm. of risks, you know, asthmatics and things like that. So I think, we, Canada, we, I think Canada and Europe, in a way, are doing things in, in, a, in, a, very, in a pretty similar way. Yeah, it's the same, I guess, uh, globally, worldwide. So... <laughs> No, I don't know if the US knows what they're doing. Anyway, that's just the thing. <laughs> uh, US, I don't know. Yes. They, uh, uh, they started. Uh, they started, yes. Yeah. They started. But uh, suddenly they have less than they thought. Then they have. They say they have more. Now they say they have the second vaccine. So that means they have enough. And then they say they don't have enough because Trump said he didn't need enough. He didn't need the vaccines. So oh, it's yeah. like, no, <laughs> I don't think anybody will know until, you know, Biden gets into office yeah, yeah. and somebody can check the numbers and say, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, maybe because it's a kind of a difficult time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's say it that way. That's the polite yeah. way to say it. So, okay, imagine I just changed my name. My name is Dr. Victor Frankenstein. Okay. This is my syringe, which is just a you know, road ring. Uh, I just popped it into you, cure the pandemic. Everything is over, everything is fine. You can do whatever you want. The thing you can be dying for months, like you want to do it. What's the first thing you could do? Oh, there are many things. I think the first thing would be to go out with some friend and have a cocktail, oh, <laughs> and, then after, and then after, and after traveling. <laughs> I really want to travel. Yeah, I miss it. Do you miss going back to France? Uh, a bit because uh, most of my family is in France and. Uh, so we, we kind of miss them uh, and uh, also because uh, once in a year we used to visit the country and you know it's like uh, the cherry on the cake when you have a long year of hard working uh, so yeah and this year I, I, I didn't plan anything so far because we, we still don't know what to do <coughs> next year mm -hmm. so and uh, even traveling in um, in, in Quebec or in Canada was complicated because some of the border between the states were closed as well, or it was not recommended to travel to area where people uh, were safe because mm -hmm. in Montreal we were uh, like the the, the most uh, touched city in terms mm -hmm. of uh, COVID things, you know, so yeah. Yeah, here, here we even have right now because the numbers, of course, because people is people are stupid uh on, <laughs> and on black friday instead of being home as everybody told them stay home they went out to shop so of okay. course 15 days later the numbers did this when we were having the best uh, thing in europe Sp spain is always hit first and then of course we get out of it later so the moment they the moment they realize hey hi let's go for black friday so like in 15 yeah. days we're going to have problems so we have problems now so we, it's not even that the states are closed here for example in <laughs> catania where i am the big towns are close between each other. You cannot oh. move between towns. Yeah, that's true. You have a permission, of course, my, like my wife. She can go to Barcelona because she has a permission to work. Okay. My daughter she has a permission to go to the to go to school because mm -hmm. we always had wanted, you know, school to be close to, mm -hmm. to where my wife works. Uh, mm -hmm. But if, for anything else, you cannot. You have to stay mm -hmm. in your in your area to avoid, you know. Yeah. And okay. today, you know that all Europe closed frontiers with the United Kingdom. Yes, I know. <laughs> so. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Okay. But I, I think we are lucky to be in Canada because uh, I heard that in France there is some uh, curfew system, uh -huh. so you only have one hour out allowed per day, which is really nothing, you know. So, so uh -huh. it's okay. It's better in Canada than in in some other countries. Well, hey, if it's better for you, <laughs> yeah. no, I would love to move, move back to my state, which is in the other corner of the country, in Galicia, um, mm -hmm. uh, for the winter, but, but for winter, for Christmas. But we, we didn't even think about it. You know, it's like, oh, you have to take a plane or a train and cross the country. It's like, nope. No, yeah. 
And right. I can use, you know, talk to one of my brothers and say, because my parents uh, passed a couple of years ago, talk to one of my brothers, you know, make a note, I'm going to stay in your house. And that's legal, you can do it. But it's like, why could they risk it? But, you know, no. you've seen the family reunification, nah, whatever. So, yeah. changing the subject. Okay. Why, why of all the opportunities you have as an artist, you know, working for many, for a lot of different media, did you one day say, I want to do comics. Why? What drove you crazy? No, I mean, why did you want to do it? Oh, okay. Uh, because um, actually, my first love. What? What? Um, uh, how can I explain that? Uh, I'm a self-made artist. I didn't go to art school. Yeah. And uh, what actually uh, drove me to draw when I was a child and a teen was. Um, uh, comics, but uh, you know, uh, Japanese, European, and uh, US ones mm -hmm. all together, uh, really eclectic. So it's it was kind of my first love. And um, mm -hmm. when I started as a, a freelancer, as an artist, I, I was mainly uh, an illustrator, so it was only one image at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually not uh, thinking I will be able to do comic books because it's a lot of work, as mm -hmm. you may know, uh, for not that much of a nice pay in comparison to advertising or things like that. And uh, I, I was really, you know, I, I was terrified. Like, I, I will never be able humanly to do a book uh, in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And um, in uh, 2008, there was an economic crisis. I don't know if you remember. Oh, they have all <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've been through it. It's it, been... it caused my wife her all her life as an architect. Uh, yeah, but for me, it was one year without any uh, um, income. It was yes, awful. exactly, exactly. You know, she was a, she was an architect in a big company, and suddenly, oh. do 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 disappeared, yeah. disappeared. Yeah. yeah, and I remember work. I was working a lot for advertising, and I remember having all the the projects I was on. Like, oh, sorry, we can't sell. We don't have the budget anymore. We will internalize. So everything was kept. Yes. And, uh, and all the art directors in the agencies, they kind of disappear. And so my uh, my first uh, contact uh, in my jobs will be a um, marketing team. So, the, so it will be really, really dif different approach about illustration. Yeah. And it was more and more difficult. And I started the um, at this time in the, uh, 2008. So I started the blog uh, with another name which was uh, Maddy Martin or uh, Madeleine Martin. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a webcomic, you know, but on a blog. And uh, finally, it got a little uh, bit of success and it was published uh, by Delcourt. So I started uh, doing comic books. Uh, but with this style, with, with this Madeleine Martin style, which is uh, very uh, more simplistic. I don't know how to say that. It's really no, 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 fine. It's, it's more animation-like, or you know. And so I think it kind of um, securized me in the time that I, I'm able to take this amount of work. Mm -hmm. And then after, uh, I was like, uh, okay, maybe I, I should try to do comic books, but with Marguerite Sauvage style. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was really into US comics because I really love the way of working of uh, the USA. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing illustration for Europe, Japan, and USA. And each time I work from the American people, I, I, I was thrilled by their way of working because they are, I don't know, they are really square, really professional. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Yeah. Really effective. So yes. no yes, there is I, no I always, I always love the, the, to use the word pragmatic. Yeah, pragmatic, but really nice. But you know, they don't they don't let emotion being a burden. And yeah. I, I was used to a lot of uh, sometimes uh, you know relationship to clients in Europe that has that were most like, oh, you can't ask for more money. You know, what are you doing that to us? And I'm like. I'm just a freelance, you know, and I don't have to feel guilty for asking nope. a little bit of a raise. <laughs> and so I, and so at this, at this moment, so going back uh, in time, at this moment, um, Stephanie Hans and Gerald Parrad, we were both in comics, they told me, 
if you want to go um, to make a break, uh, a break, a break in comic in, in break, the comic break, industry, yes. yes, you have to do some fan art because they need to see that your art style actually can apply to licenses. So it's what I started to do, and my work. Uh, was both uh, noticed but by um, Will Denis at Vertigo. Mm -hmm. I, I, my accent is terrible, but maybe it's uh, okay. It's fine. And, and um, by Sana Amana uh, for a cover for uh, Mrs. Miss Marvel. Miss mm -hmm. Marvel. And uh, so that's how I started. And mm -hmm. then uh, I'm doing that full time because I have no room for uh, nothing else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's it. And uh, how, ma how many things did faith change for you? Well, um, a lot, actually, because I, I was super lucky because I, I still feel uh, like a beginner in the industry. It's only been a few years. And the, some of the first projects I worked on, well, it, it were Faith and Bombshells. Uh, it, it was at the same time. And mm -hmm. both are really meaningful in terms of uh, a lot of subjects, uh, body positive, of, of course, but uh, gender uh, representation, diversity. And uh, so I think it uh, kind of allowed me to uh, take on an uh, interesting subject and interesting character. And, um, and also, it, it was this kind of comics that uh, made a difference, mm -hmm. I think, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, people come to your table when you are at Comic-Con and they told you, oh, finally, someone that looked like me. Oh, finally, my girlfriend got to read comics because of these titles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, yeah, I think it, uh, it was really interesting in a lot of different subjects. Yes, that's what I was, was, was going to ask, because it, was on, it wasn't only on one level. It's not only as a creator, oh, because wow. it makes your career, you know, jump and many other people notice you. It's also about the personal level and the reflection of your art in the readers, right? Yeah, also, yes, yes, it's important. Mm -hmm. No, because it, it, that was, uh, I remember, you know, Francis was doing it with you at the same time. Yes. And, and, uh, and I, keep, like, I keep remembering every time and reminding myself and reminding other people is this is important. Let's okay. not look for let's let's not lose focus on any time of how important this book is, because mm -hmm. this book is about many kinds of people who've never been represented in American comics. Yeah, or, or shyly. Do you say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, look, see, Felipe Gonzalez was, I, I think, asking the same question. Hi, a pleasure to have you here. You have a unique style, and your pencils are so special. Was it difficult to enter the world of American comics coming from the world of illustration and the creation of web comics, or was it a natural step for you? So it was it so you answer the other part is was it a natural step for you to get into comics from other art forms? Or for you it was more difficult to adapt to the way of a storytelling? No, actually it was uh, I think I love to tell story. Uh -huh. And uh, even even if it would have been written. I, that, that's my main um, mo, mojo, do you, moto. Mojo. Yeah. Moro, moro, yes. It's what, it's, what I, it's what I prefer, actually, I think, to storytelling. I love to do great image, but I, I love to convey emotions and, you know, char character buildings, so, uh, things like that. And uh, what I feel <coughs> sometimes is, is that I try to adapt too much to the industry and maybe I, I lost a bit of my uh, person, personal touch. Yeah. So I'm trying to get, to get back to it uh, yes. currently. <laughs> so we'll see if it will be welcomed uh, or not. <laughs> it is, it'll be welcome because people love Marguerite Chauvage. Now it's just, a ta just, now it's just a time where you're established enough to say, Okay, you love my work, so I'm going to. You're going to see more and more of myself. I hope. I hope it will be. Well to be honest, I think that's the only way you can endure in this industry. Yeah. When maybe. you just, you know, blow blow a door open and say, "This is me," whether you like it or not, this is me. If you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, scared and say, "I will never open that door," because in the middle, it's it feels really fine. You know what happens with the people who stay in the middle of any art industry, right? They disappear. Ah. Uh. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure I have enough insight. Uh, you, you do. Of course you do. 
Uh, Paula Ventimiglia says, I love her bombshells. Okay. She loves your bombshells. Okay. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. Uh, what is, we, we, let's go back to storytelling. What is for you, if I tell you, let's talk about music. For you, storytelling is in comics. It's a symphony, rock and roll, or jazz. It's all of them. <laughs> it's all. Okay, of them. bye. Yeah, because because you know it depends. You know it depends the kind of story you are reading. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So give me an example. Faith. What was faith? Pop. Pop. Pop rock. Okay. Okay. A bit of pop rock for me. Yeah. And Buffy. <sighs> More positive. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. For me, it could be oh, what can it could be? Uh, it could be like um, the, the, I'm thinking of it, <laughs> an artist that I would suggest. Uh, with with Buffy, if in case maybe we won't help at all, but uh, no. you can kill me if you don't agree. With Buffy, I've always thought about Joss Whedon listening to California rock and roll. You know, uh, okay. the, the Beach Boys and that kind of thing. Uh, surf. Oh, really? You know, yeah. surf, surf, surfer songs and all that, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, that, that's what I see in my head. But the beautiful young people, and I see Buffy, and like, mm, I think the, the Beach Boys and that kind of thing. But maybe I go. Yeah. Fa face, it could, be, uh, it could be a lot of things, actually, you know, like uh, like uh, metronomy, or <laughs> I don't yes. know, you know, this kind of. Uh, of Pop rock, but good. <laughs> Doesn't matter, you know. It's just you know, I always equate music to music to uh, to comics because I think that the storytelling is really similar. When people compare comic storytelling with movies, I I never agree. I always think it's either music or poetry because of the way you know comics move. It's always this way, and also because you can manipulate time and space in a certain way that you cannot do in movies. Or it doesn't work that well in movies, or you know, or in um, or in a, in a novel. You know, in comics, you can move back and forth in yeah. at, at any at any time. And uh, no, guys, don't worry. I won't mm. mention the Einstein thing today. I, I'll leave it for another day. <laughs> but how important is for you, or what do you prefer when you're telling a story? To go linear, you know, beginning to end. This is my story, or you like to play with those tools and say, I can jump back and forth, I can move location to location in any way, and then put all the pieces together in the end. You mean as a reader or as an artist? As an artist, of course. You can tell me as a reader too. Mm, as, a, as an artist, I work linear because sometimes there is so many elements per uh, story that I know if I jump, if, if I, for example, start with the beginning and then do the ending and then do the middle, I will, I, I'm pretty sure at the middle I will, I will be, oh God, I forgot this detail that is not in the end. So I have to redo all the page. So no, I go, uh, I go linear each time. Mm -hmm. And as a reader, do you like stories that are not linear or do you like stories that are linear or both? Both, it, it, as far as the story is good, actually. Mm -hmm. That's a, the, the main point. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And mm. do you think comics as a language have any any limits? Not really, no. No, it doesn't. You can do anything you want with a comic. Mm -hmm. and it, what... ex except odor, but maybe later. <laughs> you th are you sure you cannot? Transmit other because I always said, and I always say I'm not talking about synesthesia, but I, I keep saying yeah. good colorists can give you sound. I can yeah. bring sound. So like, uh, I think with artists like you or others, mm. you can transmit the other. You know, if you see a rotten corpse, you know, yeah, Charlie yeah. Adler, Charlie Adler and Walking Dead, mm -hmm. or Benny Wrightson in everything he did. I, you know, you didn't you don't smell it, of course, but you perceive your brain is perceiving mm -hmm. the other. Yeah. Like you're perceiving it maybe in movies, right? In horror movies, even if you are not there. Yeah, or in uh, like Charlie and, Charlie and uh, Chocolate Factory. 
<laughs> yeah, for example. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I remember when I watched uh, Die Hard, the yeah. first one, many, many years ago. And I couldn't stop saying, stop smoking. Yeah. Because every time he could he put a cigarette, I wanted to smoke. Yeah, but this is the default smokers. But you but you know what I mean? It's like yeah, you're, I know if, you're a, if you're a if you're a chocolate yeah, yeah. lover, of course, that movie is going to be one or two, either painful because all you want to is to go to the bar of the cinema and give me all the candy you have, or the other one like stop, stop, stop. I'm going to explode. Stop with the chocolate. That's too much. So that's what I mean. Don't you think that? the storytelling the framing the way you tell a story can give you that odor or can give you that sound i think it can yes if you if you if you deep enough in the story you know if you isolate yourself with a story if it's a page turner as you said you know i guess it can yes huh? and have you ever felt when you color have you ever yeah. thought about that about i am going to transmit make people perceive a sound when in coloring? Uh, I no, actually, I never thought about that. But that, that's interesting. I should try next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I will try. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. I would say for me, for example, I see red. Mm -hmm. but I expected red. Now, of course, a red that is toned by one ex 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 scene on a page, etc. I see red that is unexpected. And I suddenly think, that's a punch. Uh, okay. that noise. Boom. It's something unexpected. They're telling you that. Or you go suddenly from really hot, really hot, really hot, and suddenly you in a corner put some really cold color. Mm -hmm. You're telling me, oh, you know, don't touch yeah. that. That's cold. You're you're transmitting feelings, you're transmitting sounds with uh, so for you, how important it is the use of color as a storytelling too. It is very important. There is a lot of code, actually, on mm -hmm. colors uh, that you you know or not, actually. But most of the in, in comics, it's pretty obvious. And um, <coughs> yeah, colors, colors. You know what? I think the the story I prefer as a reader is as one with less colors. Uh -huh. Because I, I really enjoy um, when it's super um, graphical. Mm -hmm. And the less you got, the more you have to find ideas to transmit your message. So it's pretty interesting. Less um, is so, in a way, and I agree with you, less is more. Yes, always. Because I think that for me in colors, less is more because. It's very. It's much easier to tell the eye where to go. Yeah, and, and you know what? I don't succeed in that because my, I put a lot of colors in my page, so I, I'm still uh, have to work more. That's an evolution, you know. It'll disappear. Yeah. Horror back we, as we always say, horror back we will always be there. As for the writers, you know, the panic of page one, uh, blank page one to start. Even if they wrote thirty novels or th three thousand pages of comics. They will always tell you the same, like no, that horror never disappears. Of you know, of blanking and not even not being able to tell your story. So with artists, I guess the same. That's always the horror of not having done enough, right? Not at, uh, what do you mean exactly? The know. horror of finishing a page and thinking, I haven't done enough. That's not. Yeah, always. always. Even more work. Yeah. I'm upset yeah. with this every day. Yeah, but, but you don't have enough of a lifetime, you know. Uh, I think it's like a, it's like the, the the big work that humanity has to do <laughs> to perfect art. <laughs> yeah. how, how much do you hate your art the next day? Do I hate? How, how much do you hate yes. your art the next day? You finish one page, wake up. <laughs> watch uh, it the next day if you watch it because those people i know a lot of people who yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I, never, I try to never you know look at them again because then i feel obsessed and i have to go back to it yeah 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 you finally i try um, at the end when I, when i deliver the project most of the time i try to sleep on it so i have a full day of iteration from me mm -hmm. to myself uh 
And then after I deliver and I don't go back to it until weeks, I say, except sometime to communicate about on social media when it's needed. Mm -hmm. Because because otherwise I will be like, Ugh. you know, like, no, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're working on a company owned book, you know, Sensation Comics or Buffy or well, you know, Buffy is owned by Jones with them, but you know what I mean. Um, or whatever else. And then you're working on a creator own, something that you own. Do you use different muscles because you own one and not the other? Or you use the same ones just in different ways? Actually, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, work on creator own for the US comics industry. But for France, you did. Yeah, but it was more like webcomic, and uh, oh, okay. Okay. It, was, okay. it, it was it was based on my mm -hmm. on my life, you know. And yeah, it's, it, it, it was really different. Yes, <laughs> it was. <laughs> and, and when are you going to work on a creator on in the US? Huh? 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 Um, I have two books planned for the two upcoming years, but it's not creator own. It's like it's work for hire, but for original story uh -huh. and content. So it's so it will be all new, all new, you know. But the company approached me to be the artist on it, you know. So at the same time, it's you're going to pour everything because it's you know you're pretty a professional, and second, it's so new, so you're creating the world. But at the same time, you know you're not never gonna own it, right? Yeah, no, I, I, ju I just have uh, some rights, and uh, you know, if they sell it to uh, abroad, uh, you know, yeah, on, the, on the sales and yeah, royalties yeah. and all that. Yeah, so, yeah. Let me see what they say. Uh, Raúl Manríquez, I love Marguerite Sart, Lydia Castillo. I'm gonna be totally honest here. If I see Marguerite Sauvage's name on a book. I buy it. Simple as that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. Fer Feromont, Feromont, I guess. Feromont Benoit, hello. Ah, Ferum ah Benoit. <laughs> hello. hello. <laughs> it's a good friend. He's a, such an accomplished artist. <laughs> hello, Feromont. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Uh, Paula Ventimiglia says, I would love to know which artist she admires of and feel inspired by. Oh, can you repeat? She says, I would love to know which artist she admires and or feels inspired by. Ah, okay. There's a lot from a, a lot, a lot of different uh, fields. Uh, the first artist that uh, brought me to uh, comic books, it was Rumiko Takashi. Uh -huh. I don't know if you know her. Rama, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, and she got the Angoulême um, Grand Prix yes, last yes, yes. year. <coughs> and she's a, she's a giant, actually. But I'm, I'm, when I grew up, uh, then I fell into um, European B BD. Uh, so a lot of Mobius, uh, so many, so many artists. Uh, a lot of Topi. Uh, there are a lot, actually. I love um, uh, René Gruot. He's an affichist, uh, how do you say, uh, an illustrator, really famous French illustrator, René Gruot. René Gruot, OK. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, uh, like uh, a lot of people that do love applied art, I love um, Moura and uh, Moussa. Mm -hmm. Klimt. Uh, oh, yeah, it's Moussa. I never know what to pronounce. No, 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 no. You pronounce it in your language, I pronounce it in mine. Don't worry about it. And uh, more recently, there's so many actually. Let's you say know, Americans. Yes, yeah, uh, and in the comics industry, the industry, sorry, uh, there are so many good artists. Like the level, the level of the art is like incredible. So, okay, uh, of course, Alex Ross. Um, Oh my god, I will forget a lot of people. Uh, Let, let's let's say Yannick so he doesn't get mad at, at, at Okay, okay. <laughs> Yannick Paquette, of course, of course. Yannick, yeah, but Yannick is kind of my mentor in comics. I know, I know, but that's yeah. why he started so he doesn't feel weird. And he's one of my best friends ever. Mm -hmm. So yes, Yannick, we love you. 
and yes, we have to mention you. Please, you talk about Yannick and talk shit about him because he's evil. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's no, of course. He's like, what? No, I was, I was, I was yeah. But uh, what? So Yannick was your mentor. Yannick, yeah, packet. Yeah. Yes. No, no, yes. no. I, uh, well, I was meaning Yannick Paquet, not Yannick Noah. But you mean yes. if you, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. met Yannick no, no. Noah, tell me about it. Uh, no. <laughs> he, he sounds like a nice guy, actually, as a tennis man. And a good tennis player, yes. <laughs> yes, he was. Okay, uh, let's go. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I met Yannick when I moved to Montreal in uh, uh, 2014, I think. And um, and actually, I shared I shared his studio um, with uh, other artists, other very good artists actually. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's really nice, and uh, he he's like sharing a lot uh, about uh, how things are working and what I should do. And uh, but you know, always encouraging. And uh, I was really lucky I met him because I. Uh, I think I understood really quickly and better mm -hmm. how things are going to work and be. So yeah, and uh, and uh, I remember the, the first convention I did. Uh, I was so afraid, <laughs> and and I was looking <coughs> to be close to him at the table. The, the, we were really close, and there was a Stephanie Hans as well, and we were like the French corner. <laughs> <laughs> It was super funny. Don't be surprised. Us Spaniards are the same. Yeah, okay. So if you go to New York Comic Con or San Diego or any of the others, you'll see that, you know, we tend to be together. I guess because, you know, half of us, half of the people there don't speak English so well, so they yeah. need the others to help. But by the end of the day, it's just, you know, it's the vibe. It's the people you know. You can be relaxed around them, not being, you know, like, oh, that guy, I don't know if he hates people cursing, so... Maybe I'll curse and he get and he'll get angry, or maybe I have to go to the to the bathroom and ask him, "Can you know take care of my table?" And he's gonna say, mm. "Screw you, I'm not." <laughs> so in a way, you have to look for you know that confidence, right? Yes, yeah, it's really important, especially when you're you're new to it, you know. And mm. uh, how many times did he play the piano? Uh, each time she, each, each time he, he will. Fell on the piano, <laughs> you know. Each time there is a piano. Who is the piano. piano. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's a piano there. Let's go. I yeah. remember Motor City Con with the host a piano like many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And there was a piano just in the middle of the hotel. And he I didn't know he'd play the piano. I'm talking about many, many years ago. And he just literally tap 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 and started playing. And we're like, what the fuck? Uh, and, and some friends of his were on and like, no, he does this every time. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, um, and other American comics you were saying? Sorry? And other American comics, let's stop talking about Yannick because his ego is already there. No, I'm kidding. Another people, uh, another artist? <coughs> yeah, another quick. There is, there is too much, actually, you know, like... Uh... You can stay all the Canadians because you, you the, the level of talent you, you guys have in Canada, I think is like inch by inch. Is the, the, and, and I'm in Spain and I know what they're talking about. But like, really, uh, the level of quality you know but you having and you have in Canada is actually incredible and it's changing comics in a big way. You yeah, know. that's true actually. But we are not that, we are not that many in Canada actually. No. That's the if thing, I, you know, you're not that many, but the quality, yeah. the average quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yeah. I mean, like uh, oh yes. <laughs> so yeah, I have a few names that <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's too hard. Imonen, yeah, uh, yeah, Chip, Chip, Chip Sedarsky, because we decided the other day yeah, yeah. his fake name is going to be Russian from now on between us. So it's Sedarsky. Okay. Yeah, Sedarsky. Every time I mention him, Sedarsky. Then we have uh, Francis Manapo. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, they, they Finch and his wife, you know, he's just started telling names. Yes. There's a lot of a lot of big names between the uh, Toronto area, the Vancouver area, and then you guys in Montreal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, we, we are not that much in Montreal, actually. Most of the people from the Canadian comic books um, universe, I, I, I know only a few. Yes. Like, personally, I mean. Um, so. Because you're, you're like Asterix and Obelix. You know, you're the isolated. 
isolated, you know, yeah. speaking area. And if the Romans try to invade you, which is the other Canadians, you, you, you know, you're there with a the hammer. But... <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> let me see. Javier Gonzalez, I knew her as an illustrator in a 2005 six computer arts Mac. And it has been a real pleasure to see her play that look, that touch, that color palette to some of my favorite comics in the last years. Marguerite, that's Javier. Sorry, Javier, I didn't say your name. Javier Gonzalez Delgado. Marguerite, it's always a guarantee to say your name on the to see your name on the cover. Really look, looking forward to your Cara Soel, Superwoman, a first look for one of my favorite superheroes. Cara is in good hands. Thank you. I hope you will not be disappointed. <laughs> No, I'm sure. I'm sure you can you tell anything about that, or is that new? And the raps no talk, no talk, no talk until DC allows you. Uh, if I can talk about the project, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yes, I can actually. I, I deliver uh, my last page on this Friday, last Friday, uh, <laughs> and and I ask, I ask the editor, oh, can I start uh, communicating about it? And she was like, oh yes, you should. Like, we could have started way, way before. <laughs> I was like, oh my. <laughs> You should have told me. <laughs> yeah, but you know they, they they are managing so many books. And, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I'm and with, still... the cuts, and with the cuts of personnel they had at DC and all that, they're doing a lot. That, that's oh, God, yes. Yes. So how is it? Did you enjoy it, or it was too much work? How how was it? No, they, they really adapt to my because I'm doing the colors. Uh, I'm not as quick as other artists. It, uh, uh, it took me like three months to do the two issue mm -hmm. uh, instead of, you know, I know some people it's a one, one issue a month, but uh, I, I actually can't do that. No, but, and also you do the colors and all that, you know, none mm -hmm. of the guys I have, like Daniela Cunha or Jesus Saif, who do their own colors, mm -hmm. they don't do it in a month. They do it in six, seven weeks. Okay. So, you know, asking somebody who calls himself or herself, hey, just do it in a month. It's like, no, something is, I have something in my nose. <laughs> Just crazy, you know. You're you're going at your own pace, so don't feel bad because it takes you that long to do to do it. <laughs> no, I, I don't feel bad. Uh, you know, I know I don't want to. I want to have a life as well. You know, and just oh, yes. better myself and uh, have a family time. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of important. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, and yeah, it, I, I I was really happy they asked me to do it. Uh, I, I really enjoy the fact that it will be a, a whole story with the beginning and, and the ending all together. Uh, and, uh, and they allow me, actually, I suggest them a little different uh, take on the colors. Uh -huh. And they were open to it. So this is great. And uh, so we'll see, you know, it's... Um, I, there is some pages I really enjoyed uh, doing, and I hope people will notice this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, and I think it's released in January, uh -huh. end of January. Uh -huh. uh, when you receive a script or a pitch mm -hmm. to a separate project, yeah, subconsciously, not not even thinking about it, what's the first thing that your gut makes you look for? The structure of the story. You no know, beginning, middle, and end, or the emotional parts. When I, it depends if it's a pitch or a script, actually. Uh, but most of the time, it's I get the script and I don't get the pitch. Um, hmm. Most of the time, I read the whole story, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it depends if it's a if it's a licensed work mm -hmm. from Marvel or DC. Uh, most of the time they get me on the concept, you uh -huh. know, because they, it, it's work for hire, and um, I know I won't have any uh, thing to say about anything in the story mm -hmm. because that's the way it works. Yeah. Uh, so it's more like, will I be able to do this uh, with enough um, pleasure? Ah, yeah. If you, if in, in a way, if you will have fun doing it, right? 
Yeah, fun. I, I I'm not sure. Oui, yes, fun. Uh, it's, it's, it's really an English word for me, you know, like, like it's fun. <laughs> It's yeah. more like... <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Pleasure is more applied for Spanish and for French. Yes, yeah, it's more like if... I, for, for the Caras or El, for example, I loved it because um, it's it's also for teen readers. Uh -huh. Because it's Marguerite Bennett, it's inclusive. She really takes care of a lot of aspects of inclusivity and uh, not... Not politics, but maybe politics as well. You know, she's really uh, like in Bomb Shells, uh, there was a, a full issue on the Japanese that were deported in the USA after Pearl Harbor. So, you mm -hmm. know, this kind of thing. So, there is this kind of thing about refugees and uh, Carazo L. So, I, I know that it will, be, it will have uh, several layers uh, uh, in the stories that yes. are pretty in, uh, interesting. And um, and one of the new characters, there is a new character in the story, and it's a they. Enfin, it's, I don't know how to say that. And I like that, mm -hmm. though, because it, it's what we need to talk about right now. So it's a they. You mean a non-binary? Yes. Non-binary character, yes. Yeah, and I and I loved it. But actually, it was more of, obvious for me because I was reading the script and it was they, they, they. But when people will read the comics, it's at the end that they will not <laughs> I was like, wow, yes. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and I love the editor, which was uh, Brittany Holzer. Mm -hmm. my, my pronunciation is. <laughs> Brittany, <laughs> Brittany Holzer. Yeah. You know, yeah, she's, uh, Spanish pronunciation, French pronunciation, any of them yeah. probably wrong, but between both, you just put that together and you will get the right one. I hope, yeah. Brit I hope Brittany is not watching and wanting to kill you. <laughs> Sorry, Brittany. <laughs> You spelled the name incorrectly. Let's just say Brittany. You know, Brittany, yeah, that Brittany. Brittany holds her amazing DC editor. Yeah. So that's it. <laughs> I don't know if I answer, uh, answer correctly or not. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. And how important it is for you that the stories you work on, be it uh, openly or with, uh, you know, subtle or in a subtle way, uh, touch on social issues you know it's like when you finish it we're trying to change things we're trying to change something to make things better yeah this is things i want to prioritize and this is things i enjoy doing actually you know even when i do when i did comics for um for the french market uh, I, I i pair at some point with um oh Sorry, I have a blank. I don't remember her name. Uh, I forgot the name of my writer. <laughs> what was the book? Uh, it was a book uh, uh, in Casterman, for Casterman Publisher. And the first one was on abortion. And the second one was on wo women who don't want children. So, you know. <laughs> Uh, no, it's uh, Maddie Martin, and and actually the, the writer she's really successful. She did uh, Betty Boob, which is an amazing. Um... Oh, you 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 were faster than me. Okay. <laughs> Betty Boob. Okay, I I find her. Veronique Cazot. Okay. Veronique Cazot. She's she's such a great uh, writer. So it was, you know, it was really feminist. And uh, in France, we, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's different from the, the USA. The feminism is not the same. So as it's not in Spain and in, in yeah. the US, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more similar uh, in your in your country, man. As, as it's logical, it's history. Mm -hmm. And just before the Caraz, just before the Caraz or L, I did the eight page story for Bad Girl with Cecile Castellucci. Mm -hmm. that I really see. she's a good friend uh, I really love her and there was so many subtext in the story that I loved who, who wrote that one uh it was um which one is it? I don't know where I put it. uh it was bad girl 50 issue uh, 50 and who, who wrote it Cecile Castellucci oh, Cecile Cecile okay oh. <laughs> That was me, not you. That wasn't your pronunciation. We <laughs> don't understand. Yes, I will also need you. 
Yeah, what the <laughs> So how? So you you were saying that Cecile in that one, or Cecile, whatever you pronounce it, uh, got as many stuff as she couldn't. Yeah. You know, like let's see where they stop me or something like that. They allow a lot of things. The editor was uh, Jessica Shen. Uh, oh yes, Jessica. Sure. Okay, now yeah, okay. yeah. We were we were all on the same basis. Yes. <laughs> if Jessica symbol is like you have a Terminator on your side. <laughs> I love Jessica, but you know, like laser focus, the moment she's in, she's in, and you know, you can have 30 rabbit dogs on your side and she's gonna, you know, just stop them. She's that strong and, and I love I love her. I love her. She, and she's also personally and, and, and as an editor. So yeah, now that you mention her as the editor of this, like yeah, you know, you don't, you can do that. What you were saying? <laughs> so um what do you think then <laughs> should be our next move as an industry in terms of that? Moving in that direction, social, um, hearing the hearing or representing the voices of the people who don't feel represented. And I don't, you know, I, I told you about the subject, of course. So I don't mean, I'm not talking about women. I'm talking about all the underrepresented um, uh, kind of people in comics. Because... Mm -hmm. Many times, you know what this is. Comics is, or superhero comics, especially in the US, is white male or white women. Yeah. And all of them, of course. Well, there's some gays now, but you know what I mean. The terror in most cases. So, the, mm -hmm. that readership who's out there, what do you think should be our next step to reach them? Uh, okay. So, if I speak only about US comics industry. You can speak is... about US or any, any other, of course. No, no, please. It's... Actually, I think it's really different because, um, especially on the matter you, you are speaking of, yeah. when I arrived in the, in the US, I feel everybody in terms of a publisher, editor, really uh, careful about uh, representativity. But, you know, maybe I was really lucky because I work on face and on shells and uh, Lot of other things, uh, really interesting. Uh, even the Civil War for Marvel and uh, Miss Marvel. Or... Yeah. So I was like, "Wow, they're taking care of including more women, more black people, more more uh, non cisgender people, yeah. uh, like native. I, I got yeah, native, native, yeah, native, yeah. native American, and and I I knew that in France. It was just the beginning, um, and it, it took a few years for Julie Marot to build the, the, the woman movement uh, yes. in the industry in, uh, in French BD. And the one in Italia, it's a bit easier, I think, the Moleste. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Moleste, I think, yeah. So I was like, wow, they are so ahead of us. Yeah. I was really like that. And I think they will take care and they will keep on making things move mm -hmm. but it's not on all their title and there is still this model of masculinity that maybe need to be worked on mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and maybe collaboration versus violence and things like that you know it's all a social it's issue about what values you want to um, include in your in your in your story uh but even even if things seems to be really positive and uh, moving, we can't avoid like uh, what happened this year, just after the lockdown, like uh, denunciation again and people getting fi firing, but that were protect all over to those, those decades, you know. So it will be a lot of back and forth, uh, I'm sure. Yeah. St still. Uh, so for me, it's just like keep up, keep up to the good work. Start. Um, I think they are trying to develop more graphic novel and uh, maybe a young a younger audience. Mm -hmm. So this is good. I, I I don't see. I'm not like the old woman seeing the young like being silly and stupid and all all on Instagram because you know they, they got Greta Thunberg. And, so she's the one who got the balls to get to, yeah. to you know to a tribune and uh, 
say what she has to say. So uh, I'm confident about things getting better and better. I hope so. If 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 the big companies that <laughs> that are over that allow creativity. Of course, but uh, I, was yeah. I was talking there to Sarah Brunstad, as you know, the other day, Marble, mm. and she was telling me there's things that you see from the outside, from the from the inside, that people doesn't see at, the, at least at the beginning, which is, for example, uh, a square girl. People mm. were saying, "Oh, it doesn't sell," and Marble was saying, "Oh, it doesn't sell." No, it didn't sell on comic shops, mm -hmm. but that that wasn't the real sales. No. Real sales was in the book market, and he yeah. was selling like hotcakes, like Miss Marble. I yeah. always say when people talk to me about, "Oh, look at the diamond numbers," like I don't care. Mm. Why? Because that's yeah. not, that's not the real world. The real world is a book scan. Look at yeah. the mangas. Look at Dogman. Yeah, look at yeah. Raina Tegel Meyer. Look at that and look at. Oh my God, she sold a million copies. Yeah. And Batman is selling seventy thousand copies. What is the real market? What is the yeah. real world? What is what do we yeah. have to achieve? Do we have to go in the direction of the 70,000 or maybe, maybe try to go in the direction of the 1 million? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Logic. You know, <laughs> so, that, you know, that, that growth with, let me know if you agree or not, but I think that when you started compared to now in terms of how many female editors there is in the industry has grown exponentially, right? Yes. Uh, I, I work with women pretty quickly, so... But I, I feel like there is more women, uh, female women. Yeah, <laughs> we understand each other. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, is there any story that you've been for years saying, I am not retiring or dying because I don't know if you're ever going to retire? Saying, I want to tell this story, but you keep saying, I am not ready to tell the story, but I will do it before. Again, I retire or pass or whatever. There is two stories like that. Oh, not only one, two. Okay. Yeah, but that stories I want to write myself. Yes, yes. No, no. That's that you got. You got exactly what I was asking. It's yeah. you. It's gotta be you. You yeah, you yeah. put on a page if that makes sense. Yeah, there, there is two subjects, small subjects that I would like to embrace, mm -hmm. but uh, you know. I don't want to curse myself, so I won't tell more. <laughs> no, no, you don't need to tell more. Don't, yeah. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And it, is there, if I ask you, forget about this story. We Don't worry. I don't want to jinx you. Um, but if you had the chance to pick, oh, I haven't worked in this gender yet. You know, for example, uh, I, I'm just saying one. I know that's something you haven't done, done it yet science fiction i want to do this or that is there any gender that you say oh no it wouldn't work i it wouldn't be a good work or it's that or in your case it's like i don't care about the gender the genre um yeah. I, if it's, it's a challenge and i want to do it i don't care about the gender but i know there is subject i'm tired of uh -huh. like um if it's overly violent uh -huh if it's too much like revenge or, and i want to get off the story where the victim is a woman or a little girl because it, I it am, has, why it has, why what a surprise why <laughs> but there is so many movies or books that are still on tease but you know for let's, me, call it, let's call it it's the easy trope it's the easy trope yes and it, well, yeah, 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 be, because it's a, it, it's like it's so common, you know. Yeah. And, I, and this is a this is a value I don't want to like. We we we've used it enough. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh let me see what time it is because we started at this time you started and you have a life you have a small kid as me and um, you also have to have lunch because in there is now. Uh, I lunch. I lunch before. Mm -hmm. You had lunch before? Uh, okay. Okay. okay, so, so that's the... Okay. Um, so it's okay, yeah, I can survive. I have plenty of water. Okay, so, so <laughs> drink water. Guys, if you have any other questions now, please ask, because if not, as I said, I, I don't want to keep her too much. But tell me a character that you like, that you could always go back to, uh, 
if they call you and say, I want to uh, draw a story with that character, is there any character that for you is like that? Like, do you always come back and draw any any time they, they ask you? You mean in the um, DC Marvel? The DC Marvel, Dark Horse, whatever, yes, Valiant, etc. I love Wonder Woman. I really love I, I enjoy drawing her. So, yeah, I think uh, anytime <laughs> if you want a woman story. <laughs> and is there any that you couldn't touch even with a spoon? Any. any... <sighs> Oh, there is some characters I, I will never want to work on. It's your mm -hmm. question. There is plenty, actually. What? There is plenty, actually, that I feel I, I will not be confident uh, enough or comfortable enough, mm -hmm. you know? Um, because, uh, yeah, yeah, but there is so many characters in the, in the comics, so... <laughs> you don't need to name names. I, was, I just ask... Uh... If there's any, no, no, yeah. there. no need to name names because suddenly you say, "Oh, I hate the Punisher," and tomorrow Marvel calls you, and say, "Hey, do you want to do a Punisher story?" No, it's not really that I will hate the character. It's more like, will it be nice to draw, and will it be interesting to tell a story with him? And you know, I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of artists have the same characters in mind. In yeah. <laughs> what are there? Have you been? Do you remember what was the last movie you went to the theater to watch before the lockdown started? Yeah, it was Tenet. That wasn't before the lockdown started. That was uh, that we, we we got like a summer uh, reopening of theater, and I was telling my partner we should go to see Tenet. <laughs> we, <So> we, <laughs> we we did the same too. We did the same too. No, but I was asking before before. Before we, oh my God, uh, I don't remember. Oh, I oh, see, it was a uh, rocket man. And you like it? Yeah, I like it actually. Just before we went to see um, uh, Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody. So I, we were into musical <laughs> movies. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I love Rami Malek. So <laughs> I love Rami Malek, but I think the whole movie is. Yeah. I like Rocket Man a lot more. Uh, I, I, the thing with it, what they did with uh, Freddie Mercury's biography, changing it all. Yeah, I know. I know. That's yeah. that's disgusting. That's just disgusting to you know. There was like a hallmark postcard movie. It's like, why you don't need to change it? You don't need to change. You know that with the live aid, him yeah. turning then he had AIDS. No, it doesn't. Have, they knew six months later. Yeah. No. Okay. It, everything that they changed in the movie or made up, like that meeting with the producer, never happened. Um, you know. Mm. I understand when you take some artistic licenses, but when the core of the movie is a, is a lie in a biography, you are like. <laughs> uh, but it was amazingly shot. I gotta tell you that you know all, everything. What they did with the concert, I was like, okay, I don't like it, but wow, you know this is a feat. This is a mm. feat. It's well done. Rocket Man was more faithful, so I liked it more. And you know, and the guy sang. The guy, yeah. Okay. And he was singing. Rami Malek cannot sing so, to save his life. No, oh, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, you, you enjoyed both, I can see. Uh, yeah, but I, I didn't have that much of expectation, so. That's, <laughs> that's a really good answer. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you just got away with it. No, no. Um, mm -hmm. And what what about TV shows? Is there anything that during the lockdown you're saying this is something that I've, I'm going to love forever and keep watching and watching, or nothing? Or you're tired of watching TV? Oh, actually, I watch a lot of TV. Uh, uh, lately, I'm on uh, Bojack Horseman. I love Bojack Horseman. Mm. It's an amazing show. The writing is incredible. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the kind of thing I want to do as as an artist, but not the same art style. But you know, the writing is amazing. Uh, of course, like everybody else, I watch uh, Pink Gambit, uh -huh. which was really great. Uh, and uh, currently, we are watching Flowers because I saw that Mike Mignola was talking about it, saying it's it's super nice. And I, I was like, okay, we should watch it. <laughs> if it's British, it's gonna be very nice, and actually, it is. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so far that uh, the three we watch lately. Have you watched Russian Doll? Yes. 
What do you think? Uh, it's been a while. Yeah. Well, no, that was that was March, right? I think in Canada it was before because I remember it was. Uh, last, no, then, uh, then I'm probably wrong because Netflix releases them at the same time, so yeah, yeah, I'm probably yeah. wrong about the dates. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, we like we liked uh, Russian doll. Uh, I do love the actress. Actually. Yes, I I, the, I I had the same thing with Russian doll and Queen's Gambit. Mm. I, I kept thinking if you didn't have this actress to pull this off, yeah, this show would fail miserably. Yeah, it won't be the same. This. You know, it's like it's it's, the, it's them. It's them making it work. You know, in a in the Queen's Gambit, I always thought that that, that actress and I just blanked on her name. Sorry. This is Siciliana, uh, Siciliana Rasputin on uh, on Immutants too, and the only good thing about the movie. Um, uh, you mean for which show? Queen's Gambit. Uh, um, oh, sorry, I'm the worst. I'm the, I'm the worst with, everybody else will know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Here, here, I kept watching and saying this shouldn't work. Honestly, this shouldn't work. This shouldn't work. <laughs> and then I was like, no, but she makes it work. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like watching one of the Mary Street movies where you say it shouldn't work, but she makes it work anyway. Yeah, that's like that. Or you don't like Mary Street? Uh, I love Mary Street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get the elogio. Thank you. <laughs> um, one mm. last, and I let you go, please. Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah, yeah, he just told us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Paula. She knows she's going to be here. She's an amazing Argentinian illustrator, by the way. But really, really good. She's going to be here on the... Blah, 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 blah. I think it's the 30 or the 29th. So she has to, you know... She has to have me in my in my good sides, I guess. Yes, December 30, Maribel Carod and Paul and Paula... Not Paula. Paula Ventimiglia. Talking about, uh, talking about uh, comedy in comics and comic magazines and comedy magazines and all that and illustration about the things you miss uh, the family and your past and the last one as i was going to say if you run comics now you are you are, you are the you are the god of the god of comics the goddess of comics you decide <coughs> everything about about us from now on I'm not going to ask you what would you change because we already we already talked about that what, about the things that are changing, but it's what would you keep that makes us different to everything else. Anything else can change, but could you say these things that makes comics so special? We need to keep them in in any possible way. I say artist. <laughs> But yes, because you know, with all the new technology, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, oh, maybe we will disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm banging the table. You don't see it, but yeah, 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 yeah I see that. Uh, okay, I was going for something, you know, more epic, more, <laughs> you know, world breaking, like the language, or you know, we have no budget, we can create walls, blah blah blah. The artist. Okay, yes, that's if if we go to the core, <laughs> that's actually the best answer. <laughs> the artist alive. <laughs> that's the best answer. So. That's an amazing answer. So we'll we'll keep it. We'll keep it. We'll keep it, guys. Yes, it's she's right. You know, if you don't have the artist, you don't have the yeah. comic. And if you have yeah. comic without the artist and machines, do it. But I don't know if you are aware about the, the French market. But the the artists they struggled a lot to get a, a, a bit of recognition. So we have to keep them alive. You know, just to have a decent income and be recognized. And you know. Okay, guys, the core. We always talk about this. That's the reason we have this channel. The core of this business is what it is. Let's, let me go serious for a second. It's the creators. It's the subjects. Always support them. Always support them. Mm -hmm. And support diversity. As I said, I'm never going to mention why I do this month and the next month the way I'm doing it because that's not the important thing. Uh, and you know the answer. Um, but there's something that is called diversity and we need it. That's the future. And women are the future of comics. So let's push for that all together because that's the way we're going to stay here. And the artists, as we said, are the most important thing. Um, so we're leaving. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please don't cut because I want to say proper thank you to you after we're off the live feed. Okay. 
Okay. So I, we can I say thank you now to the, all the people here asking questions and your friend. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if I don't pronounce it wrong, kill me, Ferromon. Ferromon Benoit, thank you for coming and saying hello to, to, to hello to your to your friend Marguerite, and to all of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Marguerite. Thank you, thank you to all of you for listening. And, and tomorrow with us, the amazing Spanish artist now in Spanish. Mañana con nosotros la maravillosa artista española Belén Ortega. Okay, see you all tomorrow. We're off. Ah, wear your mask. Don't be assholes. Take care of people. Okay. See you tomorrow.